All right, here's a hand I played a while ago uh, where we're bluff catching out of position in a three bet pot. Folds to us in the small blind, uh, pretty standard raise overall, uh, in my opinion, with the queen 10, 7 9 single suited. We get three bet by the big blind, and we decide to make the call. Um, I think our call is pretty standard, although um, reads on the villain are important. He's like a tight reg. Um, I guess you could fold this pre. I think it would be like a pretty tight fold. Um, so I don't think calling is like a big mistake, especially since this hand seems to play decent in three-bit pots that we can check jam um, and stuff like that, like that. And I even think that um, even the tighter regulars seem to open up the three-betting ranges a lot, blind versus blind. Would you agree with that, Yurik? Yeah, there are definitely a lot of players that are three-betting wide with a small blind open. Right. Cool. Um, so we make the call. Uh, we flop bottom two on a queen-jack-9 monotone. Check it to our tight regular friend and he bets 21 into 36. And uh, so the reason I included this hand was I think that this is one of the toughest spots, both personally and that also uh, that I've seen in students as well, is when you have these, like, bluff catchers um, against, like, tighter opponents on these, like, monotone boards, that sort of it's like you have a medium-strength hand on these monotone boards, um, and you don't really know if, like, for example, you could check-raise and turn this into a bluff, if your hand is strong enough to check-call, um, if you should just check-fold because their range is too strong. Um, again, like I said, I mean, I think that this is one of those spots where that little voice in your mind starts to creep in and kind of says, oh, man, if I, like, check-fold bottom two, like, I'm getting owned. Um... But I think that that's, again, like the hardest part to figure out is when is our hand strong enough to check call um, on these monotone boards? So um, I know York and I uh, talked a little bit when we were analyzing this hand that truthfully this is probably against like said villain uh, that he's got like a tighter range. This is probably best to just check fold even though it seems pretty nitty. But the main problem here is that his three betting ranges, even his medium strength hands, are going to have us beat. Um, like if he ha if he flopped like the king ten straight, um, if he has like an overpair and a gutter, um, if he already has, of course, like the nut flush or the second nut flush, could even have like top two pair that's better than ours. Basically, what we're what I'm getting at is that all of his medium strength hands beat us, and it's um, difficult for us to improve. And additionally, since the SPR is so low. Um, if we did actually decide to take um, a creative line and turn our hand into a bluff on later streets, the SPR is just too low for that. So, um, I don't know if I missed anything, Yurik, if there's anything you want to expand on there. Uh, what do you think about all that? Yeah, I think it definitely makes sense to just, uh, before you say, okay, I have a bluff catcher, he can, he will uh, he will see that with his entire range here. Like, you got to have uh, to think about his actual range and how you're performing against that range and if we just pick up like random numbers just to to make it more clearly like let's assume that 20 percent of the time he actually has a high flush and he will just continue barreling then other 20 percent he will have the straight and may also be like double barreling just for sin value mm -hmm. other mm -hmm. times he has the ace blocker and will also continue to bet other times he has like uh, like like overpair with a gut shot or an open ender, but then he will improve to a better hand. And even if we get to showdown, we will lose at showdown. Right. So there are just so many ways that we lose actually, and we won't get uh, won't be able to kind of realize our equity and get to the river. Right. Um, with a winning hand, basically. So yeah. the only thing, basically, what we are hoping is that we check call the flop and then turn a river uh, blanks like eight or lower. And uh, he checks it. Just he gives it, does us a favor, and checks it down. And we just can't really count on this, uh, that. That. Yep. So, on this type of board, we are yeah better off by just check folding the flop and avoid like putting in that money and have to fold the future bets. Yeah, exactly. You touch on a lot of really good points. Um, <clears throat> I just want to expand on that a little more. Kind of returning to the basics, uh, you want to ask yourself, how am I going to make money with this hand? <laughs> The only way that I can really see us ever making money by calling this is if we have an opponent who is going to let us get the showdown. Um, but again, like I don't think that this is one of those opponents. If he's one, if he's seriously just going to fire and then check it all the way down every time, then yeah, you should probably call this. But otherwise, um, given the fact that his range is stronger than ours and also that he's going to be able to play perfectly with his bluffs, um, it's just not going to be profitable. And again, harping on what you said and what we've mentioned in other lessons, uh, the quickest way to lose money in poker is to peel fold. Uh, 
build up big pots and then give up on them. And that's exactly uh, what I ended up doing in this hand. And that's exactly what you should avoid. So <clears throat> I ended up check calling, of course, making a straight on the turn, um, and then folding when I actually made my hand. Uh, so again, like, uh, there's just not very many ways for us to win the hand on the flop. And I think that it's one of those spots on, uh, on monotone flops where you should just fold. And I think it also highlights the difference between like, um, board textures, like heavier and lighter monotone boards. Like this is a heavier monotone board. So I think it's a lot different than if we flopped, of course, if the flop was like a queen nine deuce. Um, I think that our hand, of course, would be much stronger on that board. But again, like there's so many medium strength hands in his range that are stronger than ours on this board. Yeah, definitely. That's a big point that they are, yeah, just uh, his range will include so much more hands that even if they aren't flushes, they so, is still ha will have his beat or so that's a big difference between those heavy boards, monotone boards and the lighter boards and they play very different. And I think in the next one, uh, we can expand a little bit more on that and like explain them more concepts how to adjust to the different board textures definitely let's uh let's move on to it hey what's going on guys casino crime here now if you like this video and you want more then go ahead and click the subscribe button below right now and if you want to join me for more of my six max success secrets and free video tutorials just click the link to the right see you inside the trainings good luck